Recently, after learning about the 1.17 archaeology feature, I became really very interested in making my own museum in Minecraft, but I've noticed that there isn't very many resources for doing that. So this video, the purpose of this video is to, is that kind of as like a rough outline for any museums that someone might want to build, and more like a creativity, creativity springboard or whatever. So what we're just, I built some, a little area here to show everything off. So, well, let's, let's start. So first down here, we've got fossils. Fossils are features that were added in Minecraft 1.10. And you can see all the different types here, but they're really not the most useful things. You hardly ever see them, and they don't really do much, other than they're kind of a source of coal. But, but these things are great for museums, though, if you, were, if you want to find out how to build some. So, here we have all the ribs rib cages and here we have all the skulls. So I'll start with the skulls here. So we have this this skull. This is the smallest skull. So it's just a little this would be more it's still giant, but compared to everything else here, it looks like it would belong to something smaller for sure. Here we have like a regular sized skull I'd say and then around here it's these these things are just out of bone blocks. If you want to make it look like they're vanilla, though, just remove random blocks and replace them with coal, with coal ore, or or um, just leave them blank, or or replace them with quartz. Smooth quartz would look really good with this, as if it's been filled in. Here we have a semi big skull. So around the back, they aren't the most remarkable things ever. But this this would look this would be more belonging to some sort of giant beast, I feel. This would be a great centerpiece for a museum. And here it's kinda of looks like it has a mustache. It's the biggest skull here. Again, it's not exactly remarkable from the back or sides. These things would be just perfect for if you were to combine this and one of these it would look, I guarantee you look pretty cool and then the rib cages we'll start from the bottom here so this is the first first rib cage and it's it's really simple it's small it's easy to build there's on each of these ribs there's six one two three four five six and each one gets slowly bigger like the skulls so this one is slightly bigger, the ribs wrap around here. This would be really great for the entrance to an evil evil lair or as something hanging from the top of a museum. This one's slightly bigger. This looks almost like it would be for the beginning of a museum exhibit because of all these um, these could be used as pedestals and you could put a root roofs around them. And this is the biggest one. This is a pretty impressive find. If you find one of these, then you'll probably want to keep it in your world, just for fun. And, um, yeah, all these fossils are not the most remarkable things, and, but they are, they're great, they're great, they're great exhibits for, for museums, for sure. You just kind of have to add things onto them. So, as an example here, they would look really, really great like hanging from the top of a museum or placed in some sort of configuration. If you want to make a fossil that looks good though, I would definitely recommend using creative instead. Or no, not using creative, using quartz or other blocks like that. So now over here, we've got some buildings. These are just basic. I wasn't really trying to build the best things. So we have this stone brick. This polished, this stone big brick palace thingy, this polished basalt structure, a uh, wooden house, and some sort of tent. So, 
if you were to go over here. So, if you were to go in creative mode, then you could, or survival mode, well, creative mode for demonstration purposes, you could start to age these things. So, first I'll, I'll start with this tent here. So, to age things, it looks like it's lived in right now. It looks new and fresh. So, you have the campfire. You want to put that out immediately because when people leave, things start to become dilapidated and campfires would be snuffed out or whatever else. And then some of the some bark might shear off. You might see some parts of the tent come, come loose. Again, I'm not the greatest builder, so... And... You might see... A few cobwebs. Ah, it looks fairly old now. Uh, you might not want to remove this support structure, so my mistake. Yeah, so that's structure number one. Looks pretty, pretty good. You might also want to start filling it back in with grass. Looks pretty good. Now, structure number two is our little wooden house here. It's just a simple, simple building. So for this, it might have been... Well, first, some of the bark might have fallen off or been stripped off for whatever purpose. The door might have been pushed in. Some of the windows might be gone. And you might have rainfall affecting some of the walls. I'm just using planks as kind of like a demonstration. I think it does look pretty pretty cool when you use different shades of planks to indicate things getting more dilapidated. It's pretty cool. And then the roof. The roof just might have caved in altogether. Yeah, and I've seen this with old shacks. After a while, the, their roofs will, in a way, implode. Yeah, for sure. So. And then you might just want to go in here and then add a few cobwebs. Yeah, and now it looks more, more dilapidated than it did before. So now, for the final, no, for the two final things, these are more stone structures. With the basalt, I wasn't entirely sure what to do because there aren't too many blocks that sync up with basalt. So, well, for basalt, my, the, the, basically the only thing I could come up with is to just take parts of it out and replace it. Take parts of the polished basalt out and just replace them with regular basalt because it makes it, makes it look like they've been worn down. And, yeah, that looks a bit older, and you might also just want to remove parts, parts of it, as if it's hanging on by a thread or whatever. Yeah, that looks, that looks much older now. 
Oh, you might also want to add maybe chunk it on the ground here. Yeah, that looks older. Now for the final one. Sunbrick is probably the best when it comes to aging because you can age it in so many different ways. So first we'll start with basically making it a strong, just removing a bunch of the regular stone brick and replacing it with the mossy and cracked berries. Just randomly, of course. Alright, so now that we have that done, you might want to begin wearing parts of it down. Like there, a brick, a brick went loose, same here, same there, the I'm gonna add some moss to some parts of it. isn't good for structural integrity. Top here. Parts of it might have just sheared away altogether. So now that looks pretty good. That's like stage stage two of aging. At least for this one. And stage three. It's just replacing parts, more parts of it, just with plain old cobblestone because cobblestone, cobblestone will look like it's really, really being worn down to the points in which it's, yeah. The trick with cobblestone also is not to overuse it unless it's for some sort of dungeon, in which case cobblestone will look really good. Now, that's stage three, and a potential final stage you could reach is where you just start removing parts of the top of the structure, as if they are being worn down more by the enemies as well. And in that case, you won't even want to keep the normal average structure intact anymore because it's getting more and more dilapidated. So, this is this looks like it's going to collapse soon. And there we have it. That's those are all of our newly aged structures. So now, moving on, over here, I have a few things that you could add to your museum. For me, your museum, if you have any armor that's almost broken, it would be a really interesting exhibit, such as iron armor, like the iron armor of the past, before you used diamond armor, if you're like me, who's been stuck in the mid-game for a year. And tripwire hooks could be really great keys for things like palaces or or pyramids where they could be hidden valuable and rare items it's just well duh if you have a trident that's almost broken and isn't repairable same with the old armor if your old stuff isn't repairable and it's almost broken then you might want to just stick it in a museum this the totem of undying is pretty expensive you should probably use it for its intended purpose, but if you value academics over uh, not dying for not dying one time, then it's probably 
probably a, it's one of the best fits for a museum in my opinion. So you can also have flags or banners, or you can have them emblazoned on shields because this will give lots of personality to your countries. Like some kind, of, one country of your own creation might have so and so shield and so and so flag and so on. Broken tools and shields, again, if they're not repairable, if they're almost broken, you might just want to keep them for a museum. Your first diamond. This is a personal choice because it, you're the only one who will ever know that it's not your first diamond. In my case, I kept my first diamond because it meant a lot to me in my world. But, again, up to you, personal preference. Old and new maps. In 1.14, they added map locking. And that allows you to just freeze a map in time. So every once in a while, you might take a snapshot of your base to put in a museum later. Buried treasure maps are also really great for that. So Nautilus shells and Nautilus shells and uh, Hearts of the Sea. Those are found. Those are aquatic items, and they're mostly drops or found in chests. And I'd say they're relatively common. Not this one. This one. But, yeah, they're great feature pieces for a museum because this looks amazing. Now, scrap. This is probably better for creative. It looks like it's rusted old metal, and it would be its such a good texture and item for an old ancient thing. However, it's extremely expensive, so again, you probably want to do it on creative. Fake lore books. Again, you will have to write these your friends because... Mo Yang has not added anything to create lore in the world other than what you, you've established in it so far. Yeah, these could also be used for on lecterns, for museum stands, for more information. Shards and other crafting items, these could be used as kind of like raw materials of the past or whatever, or broken, broken things like iron nuggets or gold. Nuggets, those could be used as uh, artifacts of so and so after melted down or whatever. Music discs, these could be used as, well, yeah, they're just music discs. They're just unique items that aren't exactly the most useful, but more collectible are great for museums. Your first and second pickaxe, the, again, same thing with the diamonds, it's up to personal choice, personal preference. I kept both my first pickaxes because I I like to preserve the history of my world. Again, you can fake them, but only, and only you will know, unless you're forgetful. So now, over here, we in 1.17 the archaeology feature is coming, and they have pots. Start over here. So here are some pot designs. Here you have like more vases. These would work very well as standing vases. Or like, uh, Here we have two basic pot designs. These are more... These don't... These are wood, but these two stripped wood types look a lot like old crusty pots to me. And they would work pretty well with that. Here we have some other overworld designs. This combines these fairly well. I wouldn't say it looks the best though. You could have just normal terracotta in a clay pot. It looks, honestly, looks just the best like that. You can just have a regular old flower pot. Bit boring. Here we have an end, end styled one. The clay pot fits pretty well in the middle there. Here's some desert, desert pots with the chiseled sandstone. And you could also use a cauldron or whatever as more of a cooking pot. However, this would be more for more for developed societies. I believe it would fit better. Now here, these are some really, really nice, nice pots. These designs are taken from Simply Sark from his rebuilding an old briefed base video. And no one seems to really see them so I just thought I'd add them in but they are they are credit to simply start 
So this is a flower pot over glazed terracotta over an anvil. So it's an expensive, expensive, more expensive thing, but it looks, it just looks amazing. It just looks awesome. These would be great for an imperial country or if you have an iron farm, which I do. So it would look pretty good. Over here, there are some nether pot designs. I'm not entirely sure why you need these in the nether, because there's literally four things you can put in a pot. But, oh well. If you want an archaeology site prior to 1.17, then you might just want to look at the ocean ruins. So again, just the aging techniques I showed before. You know, just replacing things with cracked stone brick, replacing things with cobblestone. Caving them in a bit, adding gravel. Ah, over here. In 1.17, they're adding pots with stories on them. And this is a creative exclusive, because you can't have invisible item frames. But the invisible item frames, you can put things in them and they will look like this. So that would be really great for, in a way, kind of the archaeology feature prior to pri 10 months or 9 months prior to when it comes out. Yeah, so that's creative exclusive. So now, moving on from our big site there. Over here, I built a little museum full of ideas for all of your building needs. So, in here, we just have a nicely designed museum. You know, museums are unless you're a messy person and want to be creative with it. Um, I think it's generally a good idea to just keep museums kind of organized. Not like perfectly straight paths, but more like you know where you are almost at all times. So, here we have the previously mentioned armor idea in a glass case. And uh, you can just put signs here or lectern. Whatever type of stand you want, I just went with this type because, of, in my opinion, it just looks the best, but go go wild with any type of stand you want, however, however you want, it's your museum. So, here we have your nice shiny armor that isn't repairable, that really sucks. So, this is more, all mostly broken, so why not just put it in the museum? So now, uh, here, here's how you can do it. Put a piston above the armor. And then glass, then just simply use a lever to force the glass onto your armor, and then we'll frame it. Yeah. So, moving on, you can have special plants from around the world, like the chorus flower from the end. I have it framed here, but you might also want to use barrier blocks, we'll talk about that later. So, chorus flower. You can use glass panes as well. Glass panes work pretty well unless it's a solid block, in which case they look pretty gross. Like for the chest, they look amazing. But that's a bit of a rare case. Sometimes one doesn't even need panes. In some of my museums, I haven't had panes. It just depends on whether you trust people or not, I guess. But it's in your own personal world, so again, completely up to you. That's just empty. So barrier blocks are actually very, very good for museums. Be mostly because you can have... You can just simply... They're perfectly transparent. They're like glass, but better. The only issue with them is, though, that you can't get them in survival. So, yeah, not useful in survival. Again, something with no glass panes. Just... Just like over there. So, again, here's the invisible item frames. These are very good for historical exhibits, as if they, people have just left things everywhere. Oh, I forgot about these. And items in armor stand, items in items in item frames. The, this is a bit of an awkward display for this, but the transparent item frame. The invisible item frame story is probably the best option for these because it just looks better. But item displays are probably also pretty cool. Uh, here we have a relic of a place to talk with. So entities like minecarts, 
or whatever, you might just have huh. like this, a furnace minecart on a powered rail. Huh. You could just put them around in glass panes and they will still look pretty good, or barriers, or glass blocks, it doesn't really matter huh. if they're this type of thing. Moving on here, um, mobs and survival, you can literally stick them inside of a cage like this, unless you like Zeus. If so, then okay. Uh, here, I I tried this, but you can get custom mobs, and if you get custom mobs, you can just spawn. Here, I managed to actually do it with a command, and here I have a piglin with custom armor, shields, and everything. Now, it, as you can see, it looks really good, and it just. It's just a really great fit for any museum, as if it's a lifelike recreation, a statue. Just great for any museum. And it's a creative exclusive. Decorations. Just literally whatever you want. I put a flower here. Bob the door greeter here. Literally anything. These could also be exhibits. It just depends on your personal preference. So, here... If you have underwater things, in survival, glass glass blocks would look pretty good. Glass panes look pretty gross because they keep a water, they keep a space of air between them and the water. And it looks just weird. So glass panes are pretty cool for things like this. However, lighting is a bit of an issue. And then barrier blocks look even better and they make the lighting issue a little bit less bad. But again, creative exclusive. So, string over top saplings if you're using any plants that can grow. You might just want to put, if they're, they're supposed to be open air, you might just want to put some string down. I'm not entirely sure if this works, but don't, don't quote me on it, but it's just a potential idea. So, moving on, you hidden light sources, if you have carpets like I do, then you could you could definitely, definitely hide them easily. So these are jack-o'-lanterns, jack and if you just go like that, and boom, it looks better if it's in a coherent carpet, but the hidden lighting, it's very, very good. Very good, always. So, flag exhibits, I found one of the best flag exhibits is to have a flag, then a, this, then a, then its name, and then more information on a lectern if you want. I like lectern so much because you'd have to have a literal wall of signs if you like to write a lot. So it's just more efficient to use lecterns, however, in survival, than a bit trickier to get. So here's two flags and exhibits for them. Here, this is more inspired by Good Times with Scar, by his old museum. You could literally just be blocks placed together. I personally like to, pre I prefer my blocks to be spaced apart, in, so that they're more separate, but honestly, personal preference doesn't really matter. And that's our, our little item done, and that is the video done as well. So, I really hope that this has helped anyone who's stuck on what to do in a museum, who's had any thoughts about what to do what they might want to do and but again i will clarify museums don't have to look like this it's completely up to you for museum exhibits i found it's it's honestly personal preference again but i found the best museum exhibits are the ones that are easy to navigate as i said so in this one i've just put a central central area and then on the sides rows, little tiny exhibits dotted all along. So we have one exhibit per little little wall section and then the big center area. So the flow of this is really good and it's just, in my opinion, it's one of the best ways to do a museum, but personal preference. I can't stress it enough. You can add no information at all. You can add too much information, but there is no such thing as too much information. You can add you can add this this kind of thing. You can have this kind of thing. Again, museums are just places to keep knowledge. So they could be literally anything. And, yeah. Thank you for watching. And, 
Yes. Yeah. Thank you for watching and goodbye.